Welcome, everyone. Welcome back to Revolutionary War Rarities. It's going to be a great day today. My name is Jim Griffith. And my name is Jim Maple. And we are honored to have with us today an author of a very special book, uh, an incredible author named Jim Stemple. He has recently released a, I'll refer to it as a masterpiece. I've read the entire thing, enjoyed every word of it. It will find a special place in my, um, uh, on my, my bookshelf, uh, and one that I'll reference frequently. It is entitled The Enemy Harassed, Washington's New Jersey Campaign of 1777. Jim, we here at Revolutionary War Rarities focus on the little-known aspects of the American Revolution, the little-known people, battles, and challenges. And one of the least talked-about time frames in the American Revolution is the winter of 1777 in New Jersey. Well, that's right, uh, Jim. And today we have the man with us. We have the author the man that put this uh, that put this book together, and his name is Jim Stemple. Jim, welcome to Revolutionary War Rarities. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be with you. So, you know, we've all seen the paintings. We've all looked at the pictures. We've all read the stories of the crossing of the Delaware and then uh, the, the Battle of Trenton, which followed very soon after that. But that's about as far as it goes. The entire winter of 1777, there's just not a lot of texts out there that discuss that. So as you were researching this book, were, were there any surprises that you found? What were the things that you didn't know uh, that you discovered that, in fact, were very significant about that campaign of uh, New Jersey in 1777? Well, just about everything. Uh, in, all, in fact, uh, what I found was that there was almost nothing I knew um, from my research that I had known before. Now, I'm a, a resident of Maryland now, but I was uh, born and raised in central New Jersey where almost all this fighting took place. And um, what, I, what I found in my research was that I had known none of it before. Uh, none of it was taught to me in school. I hadn't bumped up against uh, any of it really. And there was fighting and maneuver and all sorts of things going on in central New Jersey that I had never known about before. In fact, my hometown of Westfield was occupied by the British one night with 16,000 troops. They tore the town apart, destroyed the Presbyterian church, and I knew nothing of it. I was really shocked to see all that. Well, Jim, was there a specific event during the winter of 1777 that you believe gave the British reason to be concerned about winning this war? Well, no, not a, a single event at all. And, and frankly, I, I'm not sure the British ever were concerned about winning the war until they actually lost it. <laughs> but um, the, the fighting in New Jersey was, was radically different than the fighting that had gone on uh, previously in the Revolution or general 18th century uh, battle. Uh, when armies would fight a battle and then, then retreat, maybe two months later, three months later, fight again. The fighting in New Jersey that winter was constant. What occurred was the British uh, retreated into Brunswick, as it was called at the time, now called New Brunswick, and, and threw up some earthworks around there. And, the Amer and Washington posted men around New Brunswick to sort of form a, an early warning system for him, as it were, so that he knew that the British were moving. And so that the men were very much in, in front lines uh, facing one another for almost that entire winter, very much like World War I, in fact. So there was fighting going on almost every single day in, in along those front lines. Uh, but that wasn't all the fighting that was going on. There were militia units that were fighting. There was New Jersey uh, units, state troops that were fighting. And then they had the Continentals, sometimes alone or in combination. So you had an enormous amount of fighting going on across the central New Jersey, by and large, that entire winter. Now, um, in the, the New York campaign of 1776, for instance, the British lost around 1,500 men in casualties. But during the fighting in New Jersey during that eight-month period, they lost over 3,300 men, a significant amount more. And yet this period in New Jersey is hardly even known. And yet in New Jersey, or the New York campaign is widely, widely well known. So it, it, was, it was an amazing period. And what happened was the British didn't suffer a particular um, 
to the feet, but they, over months, began to bleed a great deal, and they, they started to ha have great concern for the toll it was taking on their manpower. You know, I, I, I find it amazing when you watch these movies, you watch Revolutionary War era movies or Civil War era movies, and you see these, gen these, these soldiers that are lined up, you know, 20, 30, 40 abreast, just marching in a line directly across a field and shooting somebody. And in fact, uh, there's so many examples of where people were, were, were hiding behind trees or buildings or any rock they could find to protect themselves. Uh, so my question to you, Jim, would, would you consider the battle tactics of the colonial to be guerrilla-like? Did you consider their, their battle tactics to be considered honorable at that time? Well, what you're referring to was at the time called the Petit Guerre, which is French for petty warfare. And both sides employed that tactic to a certain degree. Certainly along the front lines, it was used a, a great deal. There were a lot of bushwhacking and a lot of, of bushwhacking and ambushing going on on both sides. Um, but the people of New Jersey, I think, had been pretty well savaged by the British during their march across that state in the winter of 1776 and the fall of 1776. Homes were ransacked, farms destroyed, um, men were beaten or shot, brothers beaten or shot, women raped. The, the British had turned New Jersey into a, a, a wasteland to a very great extent. So any notions of honorable warfare, I think, had pretty much been lost on the people of New Jersey at the time. Well, Jim, okay. we have to ask you one main question. What made you want to write this book? Well, like I said before, I, I grew up in New Jersey. I should have known a lot of this stuff, but I didn't know any of it. I thought that was rather shocking. Um, I've written, this is my 10th book, and I've always written about historical items that I thought were not well known. And to stumble across an eight-month period of the Revolutionary War that nobody knew about was almost astonishing to me. I mean, everything is known about the Revolutionary War. People argue about what kind of buttons people had on their uniforms. And yet here we have a period of eight months that hardly had been written about. So I thought it was a natural to write about. I, I wish I had had a book like this when I was young. And I'm sure a lot of people in New Jersey and, and anyone interested in history will find it very interesting. You know, Jim, one of the things that I really liked about the book, and uh, Jim Maples, you would, you would enjoy this as well, is when you, in the book, and I don't remember the exact quote, but uh, Jim Stemple, you mentioned that your intent was to remove the roads, remove the asphalt, remove the buildings, and give people a feel for what it was really like, what New Jersey was really like during that time period, and in fact, uh, give everyone an idea of why it was referred to as the Garden State. Yeah, well, back during that period of time, New Jersey was pretty much an agrarian paradise. You know, beautiful farms, um, good, good crops, and um, the British destroyed a great deal of that. It, and the, the, the map back then was a completely different map. Um, people from New Jersey right now would not recognize the New Jersey of 1776, 1777. There were different towns, Quibbletown and Samptown and Spanktown and Scotts Plain. They wouldn't recognize any of these places. Nowadays, they've been subsumed into larger uh, corporations and, and towns and cities. And so it was a completely different map. And that's what I that's one of the things I did try to convey in the book was how different this landscape was. I tried to present the New Jersey of 1777 so that people can have a full experience of exactly what was going on back then. Yeah. And you did reveal why it was why it was referred to as the Garden State for sure. So we love trivia here on Revolutionary War Rarities. Just we love it. So do you have any specific trivia questions about the winter of 1777 that you can ask and share with our audience? I can't guarantee you that we'll know the answer, but we'll do our best to try to come up with one. Sure. I, I've written up three for you. Uh, here's the first one. What rather unknown junior officer who we now regard as a founding father joined George Washington's staff in New Jersey in the winter of 1777. You got any guesses on this one? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I would say Lafayette, but I know that's not correct. I'm going to go with James Madison. No, you're both wrong. Unfortunately, the answer is Alexander Hamilton. In, incredible. And, and what an important role someone like Hamilton played 
in the founding of this country. Okay. Absolutely. You got another question for us? Sure do. Okay. Which high ranking British officer was appointed governor general of India after the war? I got this one. Okay. You go ahead. I got this one. It's Cornwallis. Is that right? Exactly. General Charles Cornwallis. And he is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he is actually buried in India. Uh, I believe he died there and is buried there now. That's correct. All right. Okay. Got another Question one? Question number three. Yes, sir. Yes. Y'all ready? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Which American commander of an infantry company in the Continental Army during the 10 crucial days became what historian Frederick Jackson termed the most consummate artist in treason the nation ever possessed? I don't know. You'd, you'd want to say Benedict Arnold, but uh, I know that's not correct. That's that's the only one that I would be able to come up with. Okay, the correct answer is James Wilkinson. James Wilkinson. That is a name. That's a name that's not well known. Yeah. Well, Wilkinson, Wilkinson was in, involved with Aaron Burr in his attempt to, to create a country in the west, western part of the state. Uh, he was involved with a lot of intrigues his entire lifetime. And he's, he's worth a novel on his own. Okay, so therein lies the, the invitation back to Revolutionary War Rarities, Jim Stemple. We would love to come back uh, and learn more about him uh, on a future episode if you're open to it. Sure thing. Fantastic. Jim Stemple, we appreciate it. Would you like to share any other thoughts about the New Jersey campaign during the winter of 1777 or anything about your book? Well, just that this period was it was a period of high revolution, I think. It was a period when the, the people of New Jersey, the militias, the state troops, the Continentals, just really rose in, in fury against the British um, and attacked them on site everywhere they were, inflicting very heavy casualties onto them. Well, Washington had probably two um, strategic objectives when he, when he left. Princeton after the, after Trenton and Princeton and went north to, to winter in New Jersey. The first was probably just to keep his army alive and the, cha, the the cause alive. And the second was to hopefully maybe drive the British out of New York or out of New Jersey if possible. And by the summer of that year, he accomplished all that, which is a significant accomplishment. It's incredible. Jim, I've got one additional question. When writing the en- en- enemy harassed, did you see anything during that winter in New Jersey that he's still done today, any specific historical item or action that led to something that we still do today? Yeah, that was a tough one. I thought about that for a while, but I have come up with something I thought was pretty interesting. In June of 1777, the first 13 star flag authorized by Congress was raised over the Washington Middlebrook uh, bat, uh, encampment in the Wachung Mountains in New Jersey. And by act of Congress, that flag, that 13-star flag, still flies there 24 hours a day, the only place in the country where that's legally allowed. Wow. Incredible. Jim, I want to thank you again uh, for being our guest on Revolutionary War Rarities. What an honor it is for us to to have you present. Uh, As I mentioned before, this book, I believe it is destined to be a reference source uh, for every university studying this period in American history. It was an incredible read, outstanding book. Congratulations on the release of the book. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it has been, it has sat in the number one position on the uh, Amazon uh, recently released history books. And it is, it is an honor to have you with us. Thank you very much. It was an honor to be here. So for more information on the New Jersey campaign of 1777, we, re- we highly recommend The Enemy Harassed, Washington's New Jersey Campaign of 1777, written by our guest and, more importantly, our friend Jim Stemple, and it is available in most libraries and wherever books are sold. My name is Jim Griffith. And my name is Jim Maples, and we thank you for joining us today. And be sure to join us for the next episode of Revolutionary War Rarities. This has been a production of the National Society, Sons of the American Revolution, www.sar.org.